Welcome to Kingdom Life Ministries International. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. T.S. Mligwe here welcoming you to this great Sunday morning where we are going to study the word and learn some things that are beneficial to us as we still are alive and also preparing us for the life to come. Ladies and gentlemen, this morning I want to talk about learning to be satisfied with what one has. Learning to be content. Learning to be content. Learning to be satisfied with what you have. It's important and it's very imperative, ladies and gentlemen, to learn to become content with what one has. To be satisfied with what you have. Because it will protect you from envying what other people have. It will protect you from being... Uh, from lusting after what your neighbor has. And Jesus, I mean, the word of God has already said, you are not supposed to lust after your neighbor's wife, your children, and, and properties and everything. No, you don't have to do that. You got to celebrate with your neighbor when they've got better things than you have. Okay. So we must learn. It's, it's not a gift. You cannot say, Pastor, but I don't have the gift of contentment. No, it's not a gift. It's something you've got to develop in your life. Especially as a child of God. And we're going to look at different scriptures that will show us uh, uh, that it is imperative that you be content. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 13 from verse 5 from the New Living Translation. The Bible says, don't love money. Don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I'll never fail you. I'll never abandon you. I'll never leave you, and I will never forsake you. Friends, here is the catch. God says, in this life, let's be very careful that we don't develop love for money. Why? Because the Bible says money answers all things. Pastor, why shouldn't I love money? Because the Bible says the love of money becomes the source of all sinful acts. The love of money becomes a, a, a source. It becomes a fountain of, 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 of all kinds of sin. Because when you love money and don't love God, who said all the money is his, but you love money, there are all sorts of things that will develop in your life. Even if you're a child of God and born again, watched by the blood of Jesus. If you love money, you, 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 you will get into all kinds of problems, all kinds of problems until you commit crime and get arrested maybe or be killed. The love of money is the source of all sin. All sin that people do, the, much of it is because people want money. So God is warning us by, in love. He said, don't love money. Love me, the owner of money. Love me. I'll give you what you deserve. But don't love money itself because soon you're going to steal, man. You're going to kill to get money. You're going to do all sorts of funny things in order to get money. And maybe you will even commit crime to get money. So if you get arrested and you go 10 years into jail, how will you enjoy the money that perhaps God had already given you? What's the point? So the Bible says, let's learn instead to be content, to be satisfied with what we have now. As for God, he said, I'll never leave you, man. You are my kid. You are my son. I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll never leave you. Listen to what David says in Psalm 23. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my, not that money is my shepherd or money is my supply. No, he said, the Lord is my shepherd. When I'm hungry, he takes me to green pastures. When I'm thirsty, he takes me to quiet waters. When I'm messed up and I'm troubled in my spirit, he gives me comfort. Ladies and gentlemen, God should be our source of life. He should be our source of supply. But if you go for money and love money, I can tell you now, we might see you after a long time while you'll be serving a sentence in jail. And God wants to protect us. And maybe by the time you come out of jail, you've lost your family. Your wife is gone. The kids are gone. So God protecting us is a let's learn to be satisfied 
with what we have right now. You never know what God has for you in 2023. You never know what God has for you in 2024, 25, and so on. God is, has already put some things, some treasures for you on your way. It's only that you can't see in the future because life does not, uh, does not allow you to do that. But there are things for you. They may not have arrived yet. So be satisfied with what you have now. You will find that you live a happy life, a very satisfying life. You can celebrate the success of your brothers and sisters. When they've got better things, you're not jealous. You, you, you congratulate them. You, 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 you celebrate with them. When they've got a better car than yours, you don't throw away yours. And you don't envy your neighbor's car. No, you celebrate with them. Amen. When you got a, they've got a bigger house, better house, you, know, you don't hate them. You celebrate with them for having a better house, good house. Are you listening to me? Because if you don't do that, you're going to develop the sin of envy and lust and get into trouble with God. So God said, be satisfied with what you have. The Lord who is with you, he will take care of you. Let's go to Proverbs 15. The Lord God said, I'll never leave you and I will never forsake you. And therefore, I must trust this God that God is not going to be with me just like, you know, a tie on my neck uh, that is with me all the time, but helping me with nothing. God said, I'll be there in order to supply all your needs according to my riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, in Proverbs 15 verse 16, the Bible says, better to have little, or it is better to have little with the fear of the Lord rather than to have great treasure and inner turmoil and inner worries and inner fears and inner anxieties and inner, uh, 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 you know, a sense of peacelessness. Friends, the Bible says it is better to have little and the fear of the Lord. Why? The Bible says the fear of the Lord it, it is the beginning of wisdom. So when I fear God, meaning I reverence God, I, I regard God as my source and is number one in my life, God will meet all my needs, my friends. He will meet all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Rather than to have so much, so much, so much, so that you feel you don't need God no more. Some years ago, one of our, our church members went to testify to one rich guy of those days. She was a lady. She went to him and said, Sir, have you accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior and become a child? He said, she said he laughed and he laughed and he laughed at her. And then she said, when he was still surprised, what's he laughing at? He said, listen, man, God is for you poor people. It's not for us rich people, man. Look, I don't need anything. I don't need God because look at my business. Now, he had lots of business in those days. He said, I don't need God. God is for you poor people. Where you will be asking for this and asking for that. No, I don't need anything. So I don't need your God. She walked away. A few years later, several years later, things started to disappear from his hands and from his home. And he became normal. When he became normal, I'm talking about here in, the, in his head. I was preaching somewhere. And after preaching, when I said, how many people want to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior? His hand was amongst the, the first ones. It went up to say, I need Jesus. I prayed with him and others, and he accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. Because now he was in need, ladies and gentlemen. God said, it is better to have little but the, and the fear of the Lord with you, rather than to have so much that you will even think you don't need God. And it cannot be that you may not need God because you, you need God. I need God. And let's go to Proverbs chapter 30. Proverbs chapter 30. Let's read verses 7 up to 9. Listen to what the Bible says. Oh God, I beg two favors from you. Let me have them before I die. First, help me never to tell a lie. Help me Never to lie, to live a lying life. Number two, give me either poverty or no riches. Yes. Help me, Lord, to hold my tongue that I shouldn't live a life of lying and lying and lying. 
Number two, I'm asking that you, give me, you don't give me any of these two things. I don't want poverty and I don't want riches. I don't want poverty, I don't want riches. Why? He said, give me just enough to satisfy my needs. Give me what's enough to satisfy my needs. Verse 9. For if I grow rich, I may deny you and say, who is the, who is the Lord? And if I'm too poor, I may steal and thus insult God's holy name. See? Solomon says, Daddy, I'm asking for two things in my life. Help me never to be a liar. Help me. Help me, Lord, to be a liar. Now, here comes Jesus. He said, you are of your father, the devil, and he is a liar and the father of lies. So, Solomon discovered that when you are a liar, you're a child of the devil. The reason why you lie, you are imitating your father. The DNA of your father, the devil, of lying to Eve and lying to every human being and lying to me and everybody else, trying to deceive us to get us into trouble. So when you lie, you are imitating your father. That's Jesus in John chapter 8 verse 44. You cannot be a liar and be a child of God at the same time. It doesn't work that way. Because the Bible says God is the truth. Remember what Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So when I'm a child of God, I must imitate Jesus and be truthful in what I say, in what I do, in my actions. But there are many people, even Christians, who are lying to them is bread and butter. They live lie, they lie every day about different things. And by the time, by the end of the week, they've lied so many times. By the end of the week, of the month, by the end of the year, they've told lies, maybe hundreds of them. But friends, Solomon said, help me never to be a liar. Number two, help me neither to be poor or to be too rich. Why? Because if I'm too rich, there's a possibility of me rejecting you, Lord. There's a possibility of rejecting you. Like the man that I gave you the, a, a story about. Rejecting God. I said, who is this God? Who, 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 what does he want in my life? That's when I'm rich, too rich. And then he said, if I'm too poor, daddy, I'll steal, man. And I'll mess up your name. Because people know that I'm a Christian. And now when I, I steal and I get into trouble, what, 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 that, that's going to mess up your name. So he says, he says now, daddy, give me what will satisfy my needs. Give me enough that my needs will be met and that I'll be satisfied. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you again. Contentment is not a gift. It's something you must develop in your life. Let's go to Philippians. Let me prove with my, my, my statement. In Philippians chapter 4, Let's look at verse 11 and hear what Paul says. The Bible says, not that this is Paul speaking, he said, not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation where, where it is with a full stomach or an empty stomach or with plenty, or with little. Hallelujah. So Paul discovered that, um, let me add verse 10. He says, now I praise the Lord that you are concerned about me again. I know you have always been concerned for me, but you didn't have the chance to help me. Now, Paul says to the church of, of Philippi, he said, guys, I, 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 I'm your pastor. I, I, I founded this church. I, I'm the one who started this church. Now, I, I realized on the way as I served God that you guys were not supporting me. You, you, you were doing nothing for me. I'm your pastor. I, I, I gave birth to this church and I, I looked after you and I, I preached to you and I helped you. But you guys don't care about me. You didn't care. He says... But now, in, way down there, he says, but I'm happy that you sent Epaphroditus to come give me what you collected as a church to bless me. Now you sent Epaphroditus to bring a, a, a collection that you made for me, your pastor. Now, he said, I, I, I'm not saying uh, I, 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 
I, I, I have needs in my life. I have learned. He says, I have learned to be content. For I have learned how to be content or satisfied with whatever I have for the moment. Friends, you will never know. Today you may lack A, B, C, D. But you don't know about 2023. You don't know, I don't know about 2025, 2026 and so on. That God has already put on your way. That in 2023 this will happen to her, will happen to him or them. This I will give them this at this time and so on. Those other people who already have their time to be given that came and God gave them. So how do you, why, why would you live a worried life of wanting this and wanting that and, and being jealous and all, and all that and all that instead of just being satisfied that the Lord on my side is taking care of me and everything is going to be all right. I, I don't have uh, ABC today, but tomorrow I probably will have because I've asked the Lord. But before it arrives, I'm not worried and envious and lustful for what God has already given other people. I have learned. Let me tell you, child of God, contentment is not a gift. It is something you must develop. Contentment or satisfaction, it's not something that you, you are given or you pray for. No, you've got to develop it. You got to practice and practice and practice until you are so you are so content that when others are blessed, you are not envious, you are not jealous. You celebrate from the heart, man, not pretentiously. From the heart, you celebrate with them. You congratulate them from the heart. That is contentment. It makes you live a, a very happy life in your small house of five rooms, maybe. You satisfy the moment you switch off the lights and you lay your head on the pillow. Sleep just comes, man. Because you don't have much in your heart to debate in your heart. Do I do this? Do I open another business? Do I buy this? Do I... You don't have those things. When you wake up in the night, you, you quickly fall asleep again. Because your heart is not full of all sorts of things and meetings by itself. When you are rich... It's only that you and I are not rich, so you don't know the problems of rich people. Some of them can never sleep until they take a sleeping pill. They are suffering. When there's too much money, then they, 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 can't, be, they can't rest. And they're also worried that maybe the workers are stealing my money. Maybe they're not. But, 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 but you know, you... But I like what Paul says. He said, man, guys, I learned to be satisfied with what I have. And he says now, I, I, even now, I, I, don't have, I don't have need because I know formally I would sleep hungry, man. A preacher of the gospel, an apostle anointed to preach, but I would sleep, I would sleep hungry because the church, I'm not a pastor. I, 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 I don't get a salary. I, I live on what God can provide through his church, through his people. He said, I know. Sometimes I would sleep with my tummy full. He said, sometimes I would have very little. Sometimes I would have much. Sometimes I would have nothing. But in all these circumstances, I learned to be satisfied. I learned. Friends, it's not a gift. It is something you must practice until you develop it and um, be happy. Verse 12, he says, I know how to live on almost nothing. Or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation. Whether it is with a full stomach or empty. With plenty or little. For I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. So we like to preach about that. I can do all things. And we make people receive I can do all things through Christ who oh, oh, strengthens me. But we don't know how that statement came. It came when Paul says... I've learned to be satisfied with what I have, much or nothing or little, hungry or satisfied, having plenty or having nothing. I developed a sense of satisfaction. Say, the Lord is my shepherd. He will take me to my green pastures. He will take me to quiet waters. When my spirit is messed up with challenges of life and battles of life, no, he comforts me. 
You see, when you live that life, man, life becomes good. Life becomes wonderful. And you live at peace with yourself and with your brothers and sisters who may have more than you do, who may have better things than you do, who, who may li be living in better houses than yours, but you celebrate with them from the bottom of your heart and you love it that your brothers are successful. Rather than to be jealous and envious and lustful and all that. God bless you as you meditate on these things and take a step to learn, to, to, to practice contentment under all situations. Let's pray together, Daddy. I want to thank you, Lord, that you're teaching us wisdom on how to live because in this life, not everybody will ever, ever, everybody be rich. It will never happen. Because the Lord Jesus already said, the poor you shall have until the end of the ages. So, Daddy, help us as we have studied to learn to develop a sense of contentment with what we have now. Because, Daddy, the Bible says you walk before us. You go before us. Why? You said, I'm, I'll go before you so that I can destroy everything that's on your way. I can break those gates of iron, bars of iron. I'll destroy them when I know they are on your way and I'll give you the treasures that I've laid for you. Daddy, before they arrive, help us to develop this sense of contentment. In Jesus' name, amen. You that are watching this telecast, maybe you have not accepted Christ as Lord and Savior yet. When you die, you don't know where you would go, but you want to go to heaven. And if you want to be born again and want to go to heaven when you die, can you pray this prayer with me? Say, dear Lord Jesus, I heard your word and I've come. I've opened my heart. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Destroy the works of the devil in me. Change my life. Give me the power to become a son of God. I receive all this by my faith in God. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, so short, it's so little, but it has got eternity in it. If you pray that prayer, you're born again, you're saved. And now when you're born again, you're saved, you need a church where you can go and be encouraged and be loved and be helped and be taught the word and be encouraged and be held by the hand. You need a church like that. And there are, there, there are churches like that. We are one of those. You can come to us if you want to. We're just here by the main road in Chiflanani here in Lomondo, next to the filling station here. We're just by the wayside, by, by the roadside. You can't miss us. You can come and God will bless you. God bless you. I'll see you next Sunday. God willing. Bye.